Religions, ideologies and movements have always been centred on key figures who aim to restore social equality, justice and harmony. A common idea among religions is that they have kind of messiah or saviour figure who would come and help humanity. Shias consider the divine appointment of Imams after the last messenger to be central to their theology. The Holy Quran and the progeny will go hand in hand. They will not separate until they meet the Prophet وسلم, on the Day of Judgment. There are three key milestones which have heavily contributed to the narrative of the Shia community. The first key milestone was the divine appointment of Ali. We have tens of references from both Sunnis and Shias about these characteristics of Imam Ali Ali Salam. Ali, to me, you are exactly the same as Harun was to Musa Ali Salam. Despite this being the Prophet's wishes, the complete opposite took place and Imam Ali was ostracized and killed. 19 years later was the second key milestone, whereby Hussein, the son of Imam Ali and the grandson of the Prophet, was brutally beheaded by the Caliph of the time. Al Hussein alayhi salam thara min ajl qiyam. Al Hussein thara min ajl al adala, min ajl al karama, min ajl al iba. The final and possibly most significant milestone is the awaiting of Al Mahdi, who will reappear to restore justice and peace. Islam not only talks about Imam Mahdi as a savior, but Islam also talks about coming of Jesus. These three pivotal points in history are the beating heart of Shiism today. أين المدخرون تجديد الفرائض والصنع The Shia community tends to remember Imam Mahdi through dua and supplication. The most famous dua is dua nudba, meaning lamentation. The dua nudba is usually recited every Friday morning to remember the 12th Imam and to plead for his return. Around 35 years ago, a group of Shias migrated to London and established the remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt in their own homes, in order to encourage Shias to come together at a time when there were very few mosques in London. A common idea among religions, whether it be Abrahamic religions or some Eastern religions, is that they have a kind of messiah or savior figure who would come and help humanity to achieve prosperity. In many cases, justice. And to be able to implement that religion completely. If you want to reflect on this, we can say that it seems one of the greatest needs of human beings is hope. And without having hope, we actually cannot function. <laughs> أنه إذا ولد الإمام يظهر وقد كتب على جبينه وتمت كلمة ربك صدقا وعدلا لا مبدل لكلماته وهذا يعني أن الإمام هو كلمة الله فكما عبر القرآن الكريم عن المسيح 
عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام بأنه كلمة الله وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة من اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم فعبر القرآن عن المسيح بأنه كلمة الله لأن كلمة الله هي المظهر الوجود لله عز وجل ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك تسري لبا is the crying out for the imam on a Friday which is traditionally the Sabbath of Muslims it's the holy day so when we first came to the UK in 19 let's say 62 for the first few years my father uh, wasn't holding any majalis he had his first majalis in 1967 uh, where we established the Husseinia and in 19 uh, two years before the Islamic Revolution 1977 or 78 yeah uh, as far as my memory recalls we started our nutba programs my father-in-law alhaz qurban hum alhaz qurbani nawrazada and shaykh abbas misbazada they were talking together and they said let's start our nutba in london and the same week they started the first majlis was here at 334 Six and three, three, four dollars a lane at that time. And ladies and gentlemen used to come in here, men get together and read the Dua Nutba and the Dua Faraj as well. And it started from there and it, then going around in uh, five, six houses at the time. One week it was here, one week in uh, uh, I missed most of those houses. Sheikh Musman's in this house. And Sayyid Hassan Sharastani and Sayyid Mehdi Sharastani and Sayyid Ahsan. Subhan this Muhammad Ali Sharastani's house. And then I Ahmad joined as well. Salamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah. Wa ala al arbah alati hallat bi fanaik. When I came, I first this country some 28 years ago. I noticed that a group of our bright and good believers, such as Sayyid Muhammad Ali Sharistani, Sayyid Mahdi Sharistani, Sayyid Hassan Sharistani, and Haj Qurban Ali Nuruzada. These <coughs> four good believers were gathering for a few years before I arrived on Friday morning. But when I came, we started to work on that to make it uh, more uh, practical and at the same time give us some sort of uh, spirituality in it. Allahumma laka alhamdu ala ma jara bihi qadauka fi Dua Nudba is a supplication of great significance, with its profound meaning penetrating to the depths of the heart. The intense effects of the Dua are proof that the words are not those of an ordinary person. The first section about the need of the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in addition to the fitra, the pure heart. Allah SWT sent prophets and messengers throughout the history to guide the mankind to the right path. So the first section of Dainudba start with this. <laughs> One of the 
فقبلتهم وقربتهم وقدمت لهم الذكر العلي والثناء الجلي وأهبطت عليهم ملائكتك إذا انتهيت بالآم إلى حبيبك ونجيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسخرت له البراق وعرجت به إلى سمائك وأودعته علم ما كان وما يكون إلى انقضاء خلقك The second section is about the succession to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Okay, we Muslims believe in Allah's existence his oneness being al-wahid al-ahad qul huwa allahu ahad right then he is the source of guidance who sent the prophets and the shahadatain or the kalima or the declaration of faith which is summarized in la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah this all is explained in the first section but in the second section what about the next role after the death of the Prophet because the Prophet like any other person he is going to die as it is mentioned in the Quran so and no one will stay forever in this life then the Prophet Muhammad appointed Imam Ali as the successor then we'll see the merits, the characteristics of Imam Ali السلام, all of them summarized in the second section. But when we go to the source of each one, we have tens of references from both Sunnis and Shias about these characteristics of Imam Ali السلام. <laughs> قال أنا علي من شجاة واحدة فصائر الناس من شجر شسا وحله محل هارون بن موسى وقال من كنت أنا نبيه فعلي أمير وزوجه ابنته سيدة نساء العالمين وحل له بمسجده ما حل له وسد الأبواب إلا بابا Then ending up with Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain عليه السلام Then the tragedy and calamity of Karbala The martyrdom of Imam Hussain عليه السلام and where the family of Imam Hussein was butchered, some of them taken in as prisoners of war, yeah? then calling upon this, these two masters of the youth of paradise and remembering how valuable their role was in spreading the teachings of their grandfather, the teachings of the Qur'an. Aina 
حین از سال و به زمول لنبیا و ابناء لنبیا حین از طالب و به دم المغصور به کربلا حین المنصور و علا من اعتدا علیه و افترا The third section is end of the imamah and that is the twelfth imam. So, of course, there are two sections again in this third. A and B. A about necessity of the divine guide, divine leader, to continue and according to this we see that the hadith, the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Holy Quran and the progeny will go hand in hand. They will not separate until they meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment by the pool. All right? Hatta yarida alayya al-hawth. And of course this continuation is only possible when you understand the 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi, عجل الله تعالى فرج الشريف يا ابن الصادة المغربين يا ابن النجباء العكرمين يا ابن الحدات المحديين يا ابن السرج المضيئة يا ابن الشعب الثاغبة يا ابن الأنجم الظاهرة يا ابن السبل الواضحة متى ترانا ونراك وقد نشرت لواء النصري ترى أترانا نحب بك Part B under section 3 is to renew our loyalty and our allegiance to the 12th Imam to feel his presence, although he is under occultation, to feel that he cares for us. And we have the Imam, although he is under occultation. And as the often the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that people draw benefit from the 12th Imam, the Al-Mahdi, during his occultation, exactly as everything benefits from the sun when it is hidden and going under the clouds. <laughs> And then the role of the twelfth Imam when he reappears in spreading justice and protecting and advocating the Islamic values, then demolishing all those embodiments and symbols of corruption and injustice and all things which are against the Islamic values. We notice from this great supplication that Shias reaffirm their faith by taking part in this weekly practice. This great dua emphasizes the relationship between Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi and the importance of the events of Karbala in Shia theology. If we study our hadith, whether it be in the form of duas, ziyarat, or general hadith, we find that our Imams are all connected. They are all the same light, originating from the same light, from the same source. 
كلهم نور واحد but there are some cases in which you find more connection between some of the masumin a very clear case is the connection between Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Mahdi. So it doesn't mean that, for example, uh, Imam Sadr is not connected to Imam Mahdi. No, we have uh, ideas about that. We have hadith about that. For example, Imam Sadr alayhi salam said, Law adraktu wa khadimtu ayyama hayati, or do I, Ahdi is taught by Imam Sadr alayhi salam. Or for example, his own father, his own grandfather. They're all connected. But what I'm saying is that you don't find any two Imams so much connected as Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi are connected. من هنا نرى أن هناك نورا واحدا مترابطا بين الحسين بن علي عليه السلام وحفيده الإمام المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف. فهناك نور واحد وهذا النور الواحد هو عبارة عن كلمة الله المقترنة بالصدق والعدل فعندما نأتي للحسين بن علي سيد الشهداء أبي الأحرار قبلة الثائرين كان كلمة الله في الصدق والعدل كلمة دعت الأمة إلى الصدق ودعت الأمة إلى العدل فكان يقول عليه السلام لقد سمعنا ممن سمع عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله من رأى سلطانا جائرا مستحلا لحرم الله ناكثا لعهد الله فلم يغير عليه بقول ولا فعل كان حقا على الله أن يدخله مدخله ألا ترون إلى الحق لا يعمل به وإلى الباطل لا يتناهى عنه ليرغب المؤمن في لقاء ربه ألا وإني لا أرى الموت إلا سعادة والحياة مع الظالمين إلا برما وقال في مقالة أخرى ما خرجت أشرا ولا بطرا ولا مفسدا ولا ظالما وإنما خرجت لطلب الإصلاح في أمة جدي فخط الإصلاح ومنهج الإصلاح الذي خطه الإمام الحسين عليه السلام هو تعبير عن كلمة الله في الصدق والعدل هذا الخط وهذا النور تواصل من إمام لإمام حتى وصل إلى المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف إمام مهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف is introduced in our hadith as the one who is actually responsible, the guardian, the wali for the blood of Imam Hussein, which is shed by unjust people. We have to remember one thing, that all the prophets who came, people did not comply, did not work with them and the history is full of unfortunately it's full of incidents that some sort of fights and negligence and even confrontation to the prophets look at Noah look at Ibrahim Moses Musa alayhi salam even after long long history yeah, children of Israel did not follow him and follow his guidelines. Isa alayhi salam, of course, the Christians believe that he was crucified. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ He wasn't. But of course, it was an attempt to kill him, to get rid of him. All right? And somebody else was crucified in his place. We are not going to go deep in that. The Imam, the Prophet himself, he was denied. Some people falsified him, confronted him, and even uh, called him uh, magician, liar, crazy, insane, and all other things. All right? And in the end, what happened? I mean, few people who listened to him. Imam Ali السلام, was assassinated. Imam Hassan was poisoned. Imam Hussein was martyred. So, 
till when this rejection to the symbols of guidance will continue. It is only at the time of the appearance of Al-Mahdi. الرابط الأول أن الهدف واحد وهو إصلاح الأمة هذا يقول خرجت لطلب الإصلاح في أمة جدي والآخر ألا وهو الإمام المنتظر يقول عنه النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله لو لم يبق من الدنيا إلا يوم لطول الله ذلك اليوم حتى يبعث الله رجلا من أهل بيتي يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا كما ملئت ظلما وجورا فالحسين هو المفتاح والإمام المنتظر هو الخاتم الحسين هو الذي زرع البذرة والإمام المنتظر يحولها إلى شجرة مثمرة الحسين بذل دمه والإمام المنتظر هو الذي حول هذا الدم الذي أريق في كربلاء يحوله إلى دولة عادلة يحوله إلى حضارة كونية عادلة According to some hadith the day that Imam Mahdi Ajjalallahu ta'ala Farajahu al-Sharif would uprise is the day of Ashura For example Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said that إن القائم صلوات الله عليه ينادى باسمه ليلة الثلاث وعشرين In the night of Qadr, 23rd of Ramadan, a call will be made. And the name of Imam Mahdi will be mentioned. وَيَقُومُ يَوْمَ Ashura. But the actual uprising is on the day of Ashura. So there is several months of uh, gap. So a kind of like uh, awakening call. So in that uh, month of Ramadan, before Muharram, the call will be made. But Imam السلام, actually uprised uh, the day of Ashura. يَوْمَ عَاشُورَ يَوْمَ قُتِلَ فِيهِ الْحُسَيْنُ بْنُ عَلِيهِ Again, you see a connection. ورد في الروايات الشريفة أن الإمام المهدي يظهر في اليوم العاشر. فالإمام المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف له ظهوران. ظهور في ذي الحجة وفي ربما في يوم الثالث والعشرين من ذي الحجة بعد موسم الحج في البيت الحرام يستند إلى ظهر الكعبة المشرفة جبرائيل عن يمينه ميكائيل عن شماله ويقول أنا المهدي أنا خليفة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله أنا جئتكم لأملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا بعدما ملئت ظلما وجورا وحوله ثلاثمائة وثلاثة عشر رجلا وخمسون امرأة ثم يظهر الإمام مرة أخرى في كربلاء في اليوم العاشر من المحرم فالظهور الأول كان إعلانا للخروج والظهور الثاني بداية العمل بداية تطهير الأرض وتزكيتها من براثن الظلم والجور الإمام المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ليس سفاحا سفاكا للدماء بمعنى أن لغته ليست هي لغة سفك الدماء ولغة إراقة الدماء والاستباحة الدماء والأعراض والأموال أو قتل الحياة أو تدمير الحضارة كما يفعل كما تفعل داعش وأمثالها من الفئات الإرهابية لا لغة المهدي هي لغة الرحمة كما كان جده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين ولكن هناك فئة من النواصب هي التي تصر على قتال 
مهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف من اجل ان لا تظهر هذه الدوله العادله in the night of the 15th of sha'ban which is the birth of imam mahdi عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف yeah, 15th of sha'ban is very special night and what added to the significance of this night the night is by itself very important but what added to its significance is the birth of imam mahdi in this night but what we have is hadith for example we have hadith from imam zain al abidin and also from imam sadiq alayhi salam whoever wants to have 124000 prophets shake hand with him should visit the grave of imam hussein in the night of 15th of sha'ban so you see the connection between imam mahdi and imam hussein so in the night of the birth anniversary of imam mahdi we do ziyara of imam hussein and 124000 people uh, prophets shake hand with you what does it mean it needs explanation inshallah we'll make it clear but briefly it means that all these prophets who have worked hard for establishing qist the yaqum al nas bil qist they would appreciate what a mourner of imam hussein is doing in helping imam mahdi to achieve the goal that they all worked for it It has been over 35 years since this establishment began the recitation of this great supplication, Duanudba, which was narrated to the Shias by Imam Jafar Sadiq. The program is usually rotated around five homes in northwest London and starts at 7 a.m. The members with the recitation of Hadith al kisa which is usually recited by Ayatollah Milani. This is then followed by Ziyarat Ashura. Before the recitation of Dua Nudba, Ayatollah Milani will usually give a short sermon. <laughs> The recitation of Dua Nudba then starts at around 7.45, followed by Dua Al-Ahad. A supplication to pledge the allegiance to the Imam of our time. The program is finished with the breakfast being served, the variety of which usually changing each week. The program not only allows members of the community to remember their imam but also gives them time to socialize with one another. Strong bonds are built between those participating in this program as they consider themselves as one family serving the imam of their time. I remember when we were very very young when I was about 4 or 5 years old on Fridays my father used to take me to some of the du'a and nudva sessions. And then when it was school time, uh, it was quite difficult to attend Dua Nudba on a regular basis. However, alhamdulillah, we had a neighbor of ours from the Nurazada family, Haj Muhammad Ali Nurazada, who used to live just opposite to our house. And every few weeks, the Dua Nudba was, uh, was taking place in his house. So when it was taking place in his house, uh, as it was close to school and close to, close to our house, So I was able to go to the Dua Nudba sessions uh, and then from, from the Dua Nudba head towards school. But from June 2005, I remember exactly the day, I started to attend on a regular basis every week. And on that particular day, 3rd of June, Friday, 3rd of June 2005, As I was participating and reciting the uh, du'a and uh, I told us that Father Milani was reciting the beginning uh, of the du'a nudba when it came to the famous lines Ayn al-Hasanu, Ayn al-Hussein Ayn abna'u al-Hussein and uh, the mass start to repeat these words calling out for the 
imams of the Ahlul Bayt calling for their intercessions, calling for the imam of our time, I received a tap on my shoulder and look behind me, it's Hajj Azzatullah Nurzada. And he said, it's now your turn to recite. I could always do the participation and uh, read the dua, but I never intended to sit and read the dua for the others. This eventually become a duty to me as that father was getting tired and he offered those who can help. And this came to me and I, I accepted the uh, uh, participation. It wasn't easy, I must admit. The first time it was quite tense and difficult for me. Um, I, it was the f new thing for me to sit in front of a group and do the dua. Um, with the loudest speaker. Um, over the time, it became easier and I felt comfortable. Alhamdulillah, this is the minimum I can do and if um, they are happy with my recitation, by all means, I'm paying my duty. I should regard myself as a, as a humble Muslim and I think it's a duty of Muslims to attend all these to us, whether it's the Kumail or is Abu Hamza Samali or Dua uh, Nutbe. So on, on Fridays I don't work anyhow. That's my general policy. On Fridays I don't work. I usually go to Masjid for Jum'ah pray. Most probably I go to Darul Islam or go to Stanmore because of the traffic, of course. Otherwise, if there is no traffic, I go to Holland Park. Um, but yeah, I, I regard it as a, as a duty for, for Muslims, I'm not talking about Mu'min, uh, that they attend Friday morning, do I not be? Because I think the I not be is the when Imam Mehdi comes, inshallah. Uh, but that is, as Hajjah said it in his dua, that the Jum'ah is the, the day Imam Mehdi, inshallah, appears. So for that respect, I come every morning, every Friday morning to do I not be. This dua not be session in London seems unique and looks to me as something beautiful and some, on many occasions. I reflect during the dawn that what's bringing us on a Friday morning towards this gathering, or even sometimes uh, some of my friends and families when they come from from the Middle East and they come towards this dawn nutbah session, they themselves are surprised. Mashallah, such a gathering Friday mornings, and I think personally, I think there is the love of the Ahlul Bayt, salawatullah salamu alayhi love of the Imam of our time and the absolute love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we wish to come to this gathering on a Friday morning to recite the dua, the dua on nudbah whereby some of our parents and family members or friends and the scholars they used to recite this dua, dua on nudbah in for example in Iran, in Iraq, in, in the Middle East now they wish with this love that they had towards the Imam of our time on a Friday which is a holy day in our Islamic calendar to start the Friday with the remembrance of the Imam of Atam. And when we look around, there are in this gathering some of the brothers who come from very far. It's not as if they all come from the same area, five minutes, ten minutes. No, some uh, travel uh, half an hour, one hour, some take the bus, some take the underground. And for them, for us to see them and for us to come ourselves, it's a pure love towards the Imam of our time, wishing to pledge allegiance towards him. And this is the very least we could do, to recite the dua, uh, remembering the Imam of our time. My feeling and my understanding is that Imam Mahdi will only come when people are prepared for a good leadership like him. That means we knocked all the doors, we went through all the venues, and we found every direction we go somehow is leading to the uh, no-go zone or maybe wrong direction. That's when you will be eventually desperate and prepared for a good leader. And when that good leader arrives, you certainly, absolutely, 100% follow him, respect him, follow him and support him. This is what we keep repeating in our dua. Well, it's our duty to do this and all the Majalis of Ahlul Bayt. Um, so we can get the barakat from it. And also to pass on this to our children. So the children knows 
where they come from and why we're doing this. I think uh, you witnessed today uh, an average gathering. I think the numbers were, but in the men's side, probably 45 to 50. And obviously, same sort of numbers in the ladies' side. So you're right to get somebody to get up early morning on a Friday, which is a working day in this country, you know, sort of 80, 90 people. There's something there. That something is instilled in the hearts of every Mokmen. In some people it comes out more, and in some people it comes out less. I think the passion for serving the Imam while he's in Reba is one way uh, that we can describe uh, Dwayne Nutba. Obviously, the social side of it is there also. People get to see each other once a week, and we do socialize, we talk, which is not a bad thing because you, 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 you may have certain problems you want to ask the alim or certain people you want to meet. But the fact that people get up at sort of uh, you know, six o'clock early morning and get here by seven and so forth itself means there is a passion. And that passion, I think, is instilled in the hearts and minds. Uh, we say Hussein is in our blood, which was an expression my father used to describe his passion for Ahlul Bayt. And I think the Imam, Ajalallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, uh, is in the hearts and minds. And I think people coming to a, a Nudba program, is a, um, it's, a, it's a kind of expression of belonging. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dua that by the wasila of the Imam of our time, allow us and give us the strength to stay away from sins. By the wasila of the Imam of our time, allow us to perform salah correctly, in, this, in the correct manner, in the pure manner. By the wasila of the Imam of our time, allow us to gain true seek, true nearness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the wasila of the Imam of our time, grant us our hajjad. So this connection with the Imam of our time is a pure connection that brings us via the Imam of our time closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even after the recitation of the Dua Nudba, we recite Dua Al-Ahd, which is recited after the Dua Al-Nudbah du du where we say Allahumma inni ujaddidu O oh Allah, I renew today wa fi kulli yawm ahdan wa aqdan wa bay'atan a pledge of allegiance I renew my promise I renew my alliance with the Imam of my time Dua Al-Ahd is taught by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam so several generations before Imam Mahdi was born this dua is taught. And this dua is very beautiful dua and it has many important ideas. One aspect of this dua is that it shows you should start your day with remembrance of Imam. Because this is something that is going to shape our day. Since the passing of the Prophet, Many groups have either claimed to have the Mahdi in their ranks or proclaimed the existence of an upcoming Messiah. An example of this is the Qaysanites, who believe that Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya was the Mahdi. Some believe that ibn al Hanafiya was concealed at Mount Radwa in Medina. Other sects, like the Seven Ismaili faith, believe that the son of Ismail, ibn Ja'far Muhammad ibn Ismail, was the awaited Mahdi. In the year 1901 Hijri, Muhammad John Puri, who founded the Mahdaviya sect, claimed to be the Mahdi in Mecca in front of the Kaaba. He continued to be revered by the sect as the Mahdi until he died at the age of 63 in the town of Farah, Afghanistan. There have also been recent cases of modern day leaders taking on the title of the Mahdi, including Muhammad Ahmed ibn Abdullah who publicly announced his claim to be the Mahdi so as to prepare the way for the second coming of Prophet Isa. His claim was based on the status as a prominent Sufi leader with a large following in Sudan. He died in the year 1885 at the age of 40.
in the Ahmadiyya faith, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who was the founder of the Ahmadiyya movement, was accepted as the promised Messiah in the year 1882. He died in the year 1908. Even in the modern era, the Grand Masjid al-Haram was seized by insurgents who claimed to declare the return of the Mahdi. Muhammad Abdullah al-Qahtani claimed to be the Mahdi and called for Muslims to obey him. The siege ended two weeks after the takeover began and the mosque was cleared after hundreds of pilgrims and militants were killed. Other religions also believe in the Mahdi. According to Sikh scripture, the 10th Guru, Guru Gobind, has prophesied that the Mahdi is to be born for the purpose of defeating Kalki, an avatar of Vishnu. As Kalki becomes egotistical and begins referring to himself as the Almighty, the powerful Mahdi will slay him and rule the world. The Mahdi is also frequently mentioned in Sunni traditions as establishing the Khilafa. Prophet Muhammad has been quoted as saying that his name will be my name. A Tirmidhi has reported that Prophet Muhammad said the Mahdi is from my Ummah, he will be born and live to rule for five or seven or nine years. A Tirmidhi also reported that Prophet Muhammad said the face of the Mahdi shall shine upon the surface of the moon. It is apparent that the concept of Al-Mahdi was not concocted by the Twelve Shias. Rather, it is a concept in many religions and political movements in history and today. When we are faced with the difficulties of life, especially when it comes to social life, and you see things that one person <clears throat> or even a group of people cannot change, then it's very likely that you may get despaired. And religions very clearly identify despair as a kind of illness as a kind of serious and severe and fatal problem. Therefore, I don't think you can find any religion that would not provide a solution for this problem. They try to give hope and this hope comes in different ways. One way is to promise that the situation in the world is not going to remain like this. And the world would not come to an end unless the world witnesses a time in which truth, justice, values would prevail. So, psychologically, every person is in need of this promised hope which is coming in the form of promised savior and therefore even if someone doesn't believe in any religion he would find that what religions offer is useful because you know sometimes people may say what is the benefit of having a religion so i'm saying that even if you don't believe in you know anything as foundations of religion, at least we know that psychologically, religion gives us tranquility, peace, and hope. And these are the things that make everyone happy. So even the people who have, for example, problem with uh, proving the existence of God, they should find that there are lots of benefits in religion. But when it comes to divine religions, the religions which come from revelation and are based on guidance from God. It's not just a matter of psychologically helping people. It's a matter of God having a grand plan, a very wise plan for this world. And God has mentioned in different scriptures that this plan involves having a savior at the end, a time of having comprehensive justice and equity, social equity, and being able to exercise your faith 
without any fear and without any obstacle. What will the Mahdi be redeeming? The events at Karbala took place over a thousand years ago. So will Imam Mahdi still avenge the murder of his great-grandfather Imam Hussein? We will know that is his aim if his main call is Ya Litharat al Hussein. I am here to avenge the killing of Hussein. Al Imam al Mahdi yuakid an sarkhatahu hiya imtidadun li sarkhat al Hussein. فقد ورد في الروايات الشريفة أن الراية التي يرفعها الإمام المهدي هي يا لثارات الحسين وما هي ثارات الحسين هل ثارات الحسين هي ثارات بشرية بمعنى أن الحسين قتله جماعة والإمام المهدي يقتلهم جماعة من الكوفة أو جماعة من الشام أو جماعة من الأمويين أو جماعة من المنتفعين من قبل بني أمية ليس الأمر كذلك ليست ثارات الحسين ثارات بشرية وإنما ثارات الحسين ثارات إلهية سماوية ولذلك نحن نقرأ في زيارة عاشوراء السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره فكما كان الإمام علي ثأرا لله الإمام الحسين أيضا ثأر لله السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثأره والثأر هو عبارة عن الانتقام للقيم الحسين عليه السلام ثار من أجل قيم الحسين ثار من أجل العدالة من أجل كرامة من أجل الإباء وقال لأمير المدينة عندما عرض عليه بيعة يزيد بن معاوية قال يا أمير إن أهل بيت النبوة وموضع الرسالة ومختلف الملائكة ويزيد رجل فاسق شارب للخمر ومثلي لا يبايع مثله إذا الحسين ثار من أجل العدالة ثار من أجل الكرامة ثار من أجل الدفاع عن منصب الإمامة لأن منصب الإمامة تعرض للإذلال ولذلك قال الحسين عليه السلام ألا وإن الدعي ابن الدعي قد ركز بين اثنتين بين السل والذلة يعني إما أن نقاتل إما أن يتعرض منصب الإمامة للإذلال وهيهات منا الذلة يأبى الله لنا ذلك ورسوله والمؤمنون إشارة إلى قوله تعالى في القرآن الكريم ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين فإذا ثار من أجل الكرامة والعزة والعدالة فهذه القيم هي ثأر الله فالإمام المنتظر عندما يجعل رايته يا لثارات الحسين يريد أن يعيد للأمة أن صرخة جدي الحسين كانت صرخة من أجل الله من أجل القيم السماوية ومن أجل القيم الإنسانية وأنا امتداد لتلك الصرخة المباركة ولذلك أرفع هذه الراية لتجديد العهد بثورة الحسين عليه السلام
before Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala Farad Sharif comes, the world would be in a different situation than today. And this is our job, inshallah, to work for preparation. Before Imam Mahdi comes, the world would be in a situation. You know, we are doing reverse engineering. So the world would be in a situation that all people who are educated, they would know about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They would know about what he did, why he did, what he went through. They know everything about it. And the people who are in the party of truth, in the party of justice, those who work for establishment of justice, they would all take Imam Hussein alayhi salam as their role model, as their example, someone who inspires them, someone who gives them energy, someone who gives them lesson that nothing would be comparable to honor and dignity. And if the unjust people want to damage your dignity and honor, you should even be ready to give your life, but not to accept to be humiliated. So, when the people who are working for establishment of truth, they organize themselves and they refer to Imam Hussein as their source of inspiration, the people who are in the opposite camp, they would realize that there is no way to win this battle without taking away from them this source of energy, this source of inspiration. They would do different things. Just crying, we will do more than crying. So they will try to misorient their attention so that they have Imam Hussein, but not someone who inspires them to work for justice. Okay? Someone that who actually can preoccupy their mind and make them busy so that they forget what is happening. But then they realize that among those people, there are people who are very alert very conscious, they are really inspired by Hussein and they want to do a Husseini job in this world. Okay, they cannot be deceived. They know that they should cry, they know that they should mourn, but they know that all this is to be able to get the energy and direction to continue the job of Hussein and stand against Yazid of time. Then those people would see that they have no choice other than attacking the personality of Hussein other than attacking his strategy, questioning the way he reacted. And then this leads to the situation in which you would see the world would be polarized around Hussein. Those who are in favor of Hussein and those who are against Hussein. Those who are against Hussein, they will attack Hussein and they will say, Yazid did a very good job. Hussein was causing confusion, tension, difficulties, division, and if we were in his place, we would do the same. In that situation, then it makes sense that Imam Mahdi Sharif comes and he says that I have come to call for justice for the blood of Hussein. <laughs>